So in the first part of this video, I will introduce the integrate function to you. So suppose that we want to compute the definite integral of x squared on any interval. So once again, we start by defining our function f squared, like this. And now there's the integral command on in MATLAB. So I can simply type integral. The first thing I specify is the function. So in this case, f. And the second two things I need to specify is the lower limit and the upper limit of the integration. So in this case, 0 and 1. And voila, we get back that the integral of x squared over the interval 0, 1 is a third, which is exactly what we expect. So remember that the antiderivative of x squared is x cubed over 3. And then by the fundamental theorem of calculus, we just have to plug in the um, integration limits. OK, now suppose that I want to compute the integral for different values of the upper integration limit. So I can essentially define the area function, which I call capital F here, by again defining a anonymous function indicated by this at symbol. And then in this case, I want to compute the integral of f from, let's start at 0, up to the value x, like this. OK, so let's see. If we now put in 1 into capital F, we would expect to compute the definite integral of x squared on the interval 0, 1, and we should get the exact same as before. Let's see. And indeed, we get the same thing. Excellent. But now we can also compute the definite integral on the interval 0, 2, for instance, which in this case is 2, 2 thirds and so on. We now can compute them all with very minimal effort. Okay, now as a final step, suppose that we want to plot the area function of x squared. And so for this, we once again need to define some values of xs at which we want to compute the area function. And so suppose once again, we do the same interval as before, so 0 to 2 with increments of 0 0.05. So let's define our xs values like this. And next, I need to compute the integral for each of these xx values. So for this, I'm going to use a for loop. So essentially, I'm going to write something like this. This. And then I need to put them somewhere. So I want to put the results in a vector called f values. So I want to put the if result in there. And the if result should be the integral of f from 0 to xs1. And then I need to complete my loop like this, and then I can execute this. Voila. And so let me go through what this for loop does. So the for loop essentially computes, so it picks, so for i equal to 1, it will pick the upper limit that is stored in xs1, which in this case is 0. So in other words, what it will compute is the integral of f from 0 to 0. So in other words, we expect the value stored in f values 1 to be 0. So let's check this. And of course, you have to forgive my index issues. I usually program in C. And so if you get your index right and you take the first index, you indeed find that there's a 0 in there. And we can continue like this. So suppose we want to look at the last entry, which again, indices are difficult if you switch programming language. Instead of minus 1, you use end in MATLAB. So our last value was, the last value in xs was 2. So the last value in f values should contain the integral of f from 0 to 2. And we can check this. And indeed, this is again the two two-thirds that we observed earlier. OK, now we can plot this. So suppose I plot xs. And now I want to plot the area function. So I get a plot that looks like this. And so note here that I used 
red circles on this plot to indicate the values at which we computed the area function. Okay, but for x squared, we know that the antiderivative is x squared um, is x cubed over three. So let's verify that the integral values that we computed match that. Okay, so to put another plot on, we type hold on. Then let's define the function g, which is gonna be x cubed over three. Note all the element-wise operations that I'm using here. So g will be the antiderivative of f. And then let's plot g. And let's make it black. Voila. And you can see now that there's a black curve that appeared and it exactly goes through our red dots. So the two functions match as expected. And once again, if you want to learn more about the integral function in MATLAB, just head over to the MathWorks documentation. And that is really all that I wanted to tell you about in this video. So I hope that this provides you with uh, the information that you need to be able to complete the first two webbook assignments. And if you still happen to get stuck, jump on Discord and we will figure out how to get you unstuck.